some darker branches that are sort of coming down on this side here little branches not everywhere you don't want to line all of them up it will flatten the tree straight away but what you want to do is you want to create the illusion of great detail even though you're just doing it in a couple of places really and remember you don't want to go really strong really dense at this stage you want it to be you know just as, as if it's just there it's almost like a ghost of the tree you know it's like a tree that's trying to scare you I will let you in on a little secret. Trees love being painted. So don't feel bad if your first attempt isn't as good as you wished it to be. A tree will always forgive you and will not hold a grudge on you like your friends or family would if you didn't get something right in their portrait. What's up? I'm Layla and this video was requested by one of my patrons. If you are a beginner, Trees can be a little bit challenging to paint sometimes. How do you start and what do you do next? Well, stay tuned because in this video I will show you how to paint three different types of trees. I will show you how to sketch step by step an oak tree, a birch tree and a fir tree. All these trees are very common, especially in the northern hemisphere. So if you've ever tried sketching a landscape, you would have had to battle painting at least one of these trees, I'm sure. For this tutorial, you would need some watercolor paper, some watercolor or gouache paint, something water mixable, some watercolor brushes, which are just soft round brushes, and other bits and pieces like water and some tissues. Okay, let's start with the birch tree what you want to do first you want to make sure that you mark the placement of that object and also perhaps the height of it as well so you can say i want my birch tree to be a little bit off to the side so somewhere there so i'm going to say it starts over here and it finishes over here i want to also mark the tree itself and i want to mark the actual greenery of the tree as well now with birch trees you've got sort of a branches and leaves that are kind of like hanging downwards so you get that kind of like weeping effect okay so now that you've marked this up you, you can see where this tree is going you can add a little bit more of the detail like for example you might decide that okay this you know this is how it is or maybe you're drawing in nature and you're observing the tree so usually they're quite straight but sometimes you get a little bit of a kink in the tree which looks usually really interesting and sort of gives a little something to the tree so mark through a couple of larger branches usually gets a bit wider at the bottom these are just the common sort of things now I'm also going to mark you know some of the other uh, things in my composition as well I'm not going to focus too much on the background uh, for this video I will sketch that through uh, but I will not be talking too much about it I'm going to soften the lines that I need and erase the lines that I don't need completely so I'm just gonna go over like this slightly you can work even um, less prominently with your pencils if you're following along at home because I need to make sure that they're strong enough for you guys to see but all you need is just a really really faint outline of you know and, and the placement of the tree okay so first I'm going to work on the background but as I said I won't get too much into it because the birch tree has white bark you want to make sure that the background helps you to bring that out okay so i've created the backdrop so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start working on the foliage of the tree birch trees themselves are not very cold they sort of a more go more towards the warmer shades of green so i'm going to add a little bit of ochre in with the green and create a very very light 
um, colored wash. Just a really light, fresh sort of a color that will allow me to build up darker shades if I need to. And of course we can always use a little bit of white gouache to bring some extra, you know, get some extra little highlights. Now while this is still damp, I'm going to go in with a darker color. And this darker color is not going to be very intense or very tense because I still want to make sure that these shadows are buildable and I can go in and add darker areas if I need to. But if I'm happy with the color, I can still leave it in some areas as is. So you don't want to sort of a make things a little bit more difficult if you apply very dark colors straight away. Even if you're thinking of using gouache, remember gouache is still what a mixable material. So by mixing gouache and you will be still lifting up all these dark colors and it will be very hard to achieve a very nice, bright, zingy shade. So make sure you build up your colors slowly by just gradually um, creating these darker layers. And you see, at this stage, I'm not going for all the detailed little leaves and things like this. I'm just going for these larger areas, uh, more like, you know, the whole branch with leaves that's casting a bit of a shadow. If you love watching and relaxing to art videos, check out my Patreon page, where you can find extra videos and in-depth tutorials. And only for $8 a month, I learn so much more in a calm and relaxing way. Next I'm going to add a little bit of warmth into the leaves. As I said, birch trees are not very cool in color. In terms of their greenery, it's a little bit more on the warmer side. So adding a little bit of orange or browns or ochre like yellows in there can really help you create that birch foliage look. So what I want to do first is to create a really soft shadow, a really, really light soft shadow over the actual white areas of the tree. So I'm just going to create shadows that might be forming just underneath the tree top. Don't want it to go too dark straight away, so I'm just going really lightly and removing all the paint excess off the brush and then maybe also in some areas there now because i will be using white paint i don't really need to worry too much about leaving you know white areas and reserving them maybe with blocking fluid or anything like this so i can just go in and add a really light shadow just like that now there are some areas on the tree though that are naturally dark as well so remember that we're gonna have to go in and add some of the really dark parts but we'll leave this almost till the end at this stage i'm going to start working on this again and i'm going to create another green wash but transparent enough so that the bottom layers are coming through now, because even though this is still summer, but sort of a, you know, kind of a end of August look, there will be a little bit more of the yellow um, leaves on the tree. So I'm going to use some Hansa Yellow Deep, you know, for that almost orangey look, but not quite orangey yet. And you see how I'm just I'm just creating these little dabs of color. I'm still not working on on single leaves. We will do this right at the end. One very common mistake that a lot of beginners do is that they start with tiny little details, and it can really take your tree painting into the wrong direction because then you start to focus too much on the details and you lose the overall shape. That's the danger of going in for the details too early. Okay, now I'm going to create further shadows 
on the light part of the tree, you know, the bark. So I'm just going to go over some of the areas that I think should go darker. And as we keep working on the tree and darkening that, you can see that these areas should definitely be darker too. And at the same time as we're darkening this, I'm going to use a little bit of the neutral tint with a little bit of, um, of, of green, sorry, almost said brown, hmm. a little bit of green. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of those, um, you know, those really deep sort of shadows when you can kind of almost see into the tree and see quite a bit of shadow in there. You can mark some of the darker branches now. We will go over some of them so they won't be as prominent. And you see how with each next layer we're going more and more into the detail. That's what you want. You don't want to start with the details, but you definitely don't want to leave them out, especially if this is something that you like to work on. Okay, so now a tree looks more and more like the tree that we want it to look. I'm still going to go in with more shading. So here I'm just mixing a bit of neutral tint with burnt umber and again just getting a bit more into that okay now next i would like to create a really zingy sort of a really bright green leaves you know when the tree gets hit by a lot you know you get some of these areas that are almost glowing and i'm just gonna put those in and then we will make them even stronger once we start using white and with our work Okay, so now, those of you who love details, this is when the fun really begins. All the prep work and sort of a mid layers are done. I'm going to go in for the white. Now for the tree trunk itself, I'm just going to use white straight out of the tube. So this is gouache. You can also use white watercolor. I do prefer to use gouache because it has a little bit more coverage and it's just a tiny little bit more opaque. I'm using this paint quite thickly because I want some of these areas quite light. A little more there. And I'm only going over the areas that I want to be really, really white. Anything that I want to be a little bit more gray, I'm just leaving it, you know, with that shadow wash that we've created before. Small branches on birch trees are usually black, so if you've got some larger branches that are showing through, you can add a little bit of white and like this. And my next step is going for black. So now I want to focus on those really dark spots on the tree. Uh, so I'm going for Mars black. So this is the blackest black I have on my palette. And I'm going to, while this is still wet actually, I'm going to add some of these little bits and pieces, you know, those little black sort of things that birch trees tend to get and because the white is still not dry I can create the gray variations as well but of course if I want black I need to wash the brush and go back in right so there we go don't worry little tree we'll get you sorted not that it's worried but you know it can be fun to talk to your paintings when you're painting them you know, tell them off for not coming together the way you want to. You silly painting. Why aren't you turning out the way I want you to? <laughs> or maybe that's just me. You know, if you spend too much time in the studio, that's what happens. Okay, so now on the bottom of the tree as well, we have this reasonably dark area where we've got quite a bit of gray and even black. So make sure you mark that through as well. But at the moment, because everything is damp, I'm not going to go into the really tiny details. I'm instead going to focus on the, some of these dark branches. Not every way. You don't want to go over every single thing that we've done. But in some areas, you do want to create these really dark, strong aspects. Okay, so now that it's getting a little bit drier, I'm going to go in with the black again and create those distinctive birch tree patterns 
with more black paint by just dabbing it here and there now the most interesting part starts we're going to leave the tree and the bark alone uh, tree trunk and the bark alone but I'm going to mix up a little bit of white with the brighter colors and now I'm using the white that is that has quite a bit of coverage um, with the bright yellow to create some brighter leaves now remember I said that's the beauty of being able to use the white with your watercolor is that you can build up more layers at this stage as well you can already work in smaller little dabs because we're creating little highlights that are forming on the on the trees on, on the on the leaves so you will not be getting too many you'll be getting just a few but just like with other things we can build them up and make them a little bit lighter and you see that way you can create a bit more of the dimension especially if you have your tree as a main subject you know is that that's the main focus of your composition you do want to create a little bit more of that sort of a three-dimensional feel to it so that it stands out the most now if you have your trees that are in the distance that are not the focal point of your composition then i would suggest to avoid doing these things because they will start to compete with say for example whatever else you're doing like for instance maybe you've got a person walking the dog or something like that so you want that person and the dog to be the main subject then probably avoid doing these steps okay so just a little bit more here and there um, and of course as always you know as i sort of a remind you guys for those of you that watch my videos regularly you probably know um, if you're working on the large artwork you can always use larger brushes for things like that and the smaller the more miniature your artwork is the smaller the brushes you should use and you would find helpful and easier to control so now I've got a bit of dust now I also want to add a little bit of orange in there so, but I don't want to add the dark orange anymore like we did in the beginning, remember it was almost browny orange. So I'm going to mix a little bit of orange with that sort of a yellow that we've mixed up here previously that I was using here. And just couple of, just couple of spots, and remember this is not an autumn tree, this is just sort of an end of the summer, sort of a look for those of you who live in the northern hemisphere that is. At the moment, I live in the southern hemisphere, so trees like birch trees and things like that sort of do a bit weirdly here. Um, they do lose their leaves, but they kind of, I don't know, seem to be a little bit strange. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the darker colors and just in a couple of areas add some more details for that as well. So just in a couple of areas you might want to have a few darker spots and mainly these spots are all just to show the direction of these sort of branches you know whipping down those of you who are just real beginners you know you haven't done much painting and this looks even this looks a bit scary for you what you can do is you can always do the first few layers and avoid doing the final details but my suggestion is don't be too scared you know try it and if you're unhappy with the result try it again and again and then you will get it and then you'll be so proud of yourself for sticking with it and not you know checking it out or giving up on it and because as you know none of us sort of are born with any particular skill you only get it by practicing and and things like that so all those negative voices that are in your head that maybe you've heard the critics oh you can't do this you can't do that you know just ignore those just go along and just say you know what maybe I can't do it but I'm gonna do it five times and then I'll decide if I want to keep up with it or not you know don't let external things stop you from doing things you love or you want to maybe give a go and okay so now we've got the tree and then now I would like to show you some of the final final details so again I'm gonna pop some white on my palette and I'm gonna go with the bright bright yellow 
the brightest yellow I have on my palette it's hence the yellow light now I'm going to add the strongest little highlights in the shape of just a few leaves so some here some there and now you can already work outside the tree itself as well so bring some out it's quite a no-no to start with if you're working on something like that but at this stage it will make it much more luscious and much more you know you by doing all of these sort of a speckled things at this stage you're creating that feel of you know the wind sort of playing with leaves and turning them one way or the other so that they are catching light and then in the shadow catching light and in the shadow so it's quite a it's quite a cool effect and you don't get it with many other trees but birch tree is the one that you know has that very beautiful very light feel about it and each tree has its own beauty as well you know just remember that too and now i'm going for the black or you can go for like a dark gray like neutral tint or paints gray or you know whatever you have in your palette and add little branches not everywhere you don't want to line all of them up it will flatten the tree straight away but what you want to do is you want to create the illusion of a great detail even though you're just doing it in a couple of places really we've already created it but before but we went over it with some of the leaves and you kind of do want that effect as well you want some of the branches to be completely hidden some branches to be partially hidden and some really standing out and really you know showing that beautiful detail also the direction of the branches can do a really beautiful job in describing the kind of a tree that you are working on so for example birch tree you know it has those really sort of a weeping branches pointing downwards and then some trees have branches going up so you this is what you want to pay attention to okay so I think this is done so I'm just going to work a little bit on the foreground and background just a little bit and then okay and now it's one of my favorite parts we are going to remove the masking tape Okay, so this is our bird tree. Now let's have a look at a oak tree. Okay, so we're going to start on the oak tree in a similar way to what we did on the birch tree, but we are going to look at the shape a little bit more. Now remember how I was talking about always look at the way that the branches are growing with um, the previous tree that we did, the branches are kind of a weeping downwards and kind of a sort of almost like a little, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a nostalgic tree you know it's a little bit melancholic now when you think of an oak tree it has a very sort of like strong and steady going through the years kind of a feel to it um you know and as you probably know the the actual timber from the oak tree is actually one of the hardest timbers so it's really hard to cut and it lasts a very long time and it's very strong and so on so I will do a very similar thing that I did with my uh, previous sketch and I will work on the background but I will mainly focus on the tree itself so for this composition the tree will take a center stage and the tree trunk is not very large but the actual tree crown all the leaves and things are very strong very powerful so i'm creating this overall it's kind of like a cloud sort of a shape at this stage we can stop with pencil sketching and erase or soften the lines that you might not want in there so prominently And again for those of you who are working at home on this you guys don't need to make those lines as strong as i did before i really did them for your benefit just so that the camera can 
capture these lines a little bit more um, stronger so that things become a bit more visible. I'm going to work on the background and then I'm going to come back when it's time to work on the tree itself. Okay, so I have done a little bit of a background. Again, as I said, the background is not the big deal here. It's pretty much just to plant my tree and to, you know, at the end of the day to make it look nicer. So my next step would be, remember how with the birch tree, we actually went in with the greenery first because the bark is white. Now, the oak tree is a little bit different. Not only is it quite dark, the branches on it are quite strong and quite powerful. You can see that through the direction. So we are going to start with the tree trunk. Okay, so just very lightly, I'm using Van Dyke brown, but you can use something like sepia brown, you know, just a darker brown that you have in your watercolor set. Okay, so now I've covered the actual trunk, the one that's the most visible, but I'm not going to stop there. I am going to go along with the branches. So remember that direction that I was talking about? So straight out of the tree trunk, I've got this one branch coming out this way and going this way. Because they are so prominent in the oak tree, you really want to pin them down first pin them down guys those branches yeah get them where should they where they should go that will really make the process so much easier for you because then you wouldn't have to guess where you're putting them and also with this tree because the branches are so far away from each other the sort of foliage the the, the tree leaves are kind of like sort of situated around these these large branches so that already tells you where you should focus all of your greenery but this is the kind of a thing that you want you want to show in your art as well so always 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 look at the shape of the branches the direction that you know the powerful are they really soft are they really sort of a whipping or are they strong forceful you know right out there okay and of course a lot of these you wouldn't be able to see much and we can you know because they're covered up by the leaves and then we can always add little bits and pieces again and you see how i, I haven't even like looked at different color variations or anything like this for the bark so for now i'm going to do exactly that raw sienna it's a little bit reddish the actual oak tree is not that red but you do get that variation in the bark you know it's sort of like like your classical sort of a dark brown but you still get things here and there so we've got that next i'm gonna go in for some burnt umber and again i'm not even bothered with the shadows now but we'll add all of this a little bit later on now if you guys have learned any helpful tips or anything like this don't forget to give this video a thumbs up it is for youtube algorithm that has gone really weird lately give it a like if you like it or if you learn something new okay so here we go i'm going to leave this for now and i'm going to create the underpainting for the actual leaves now just like with the birch tree and that you saw we want to start with the overall shape and we want to start with a lighter color so i have this premixed color over here which is a bit of yellow and green together and a little bit of ochre and you want to sort of uh, create a little bit of foliage now because the birch tree has a much denser coverage within its leaves the way that i've placed the brush was a little bit different now with the with oak tree what you want to do is you kind of straight away want to start with little bits and pieces and leaving a little bit of space in between in some areas not everywhere some areas are quite dense you don't get any space in between but some bits and pieces you still get a little bit of the sky or you know whatever your background is because you might be just doing this on white paper for the sake of it or maybe you're already painting a landscape 
Okay. Now you might go over some of these areas as you keep painting and that's absolutely fine but you don't want to go over the areas that you might need to leave at the end you know as is just a bit of sky showing or something like that now the areas that you can see don't really have much of the sky showing the light showing you can just go over and just smudge them like this I mean you don't have to it will happen eventually but for me I do like to mark things up so I know where my main shadows are going to be and this is what I'm going to do next so next I'm going to go for the reasonably dark color so I'm going to mix some olive green now you can use sort of any dark green that's not too cool you know sort of a Something like phthalo green would be a bit too cool, so maybe if you're using that, mix a little bit of ochre, like yellow ochre or something like that with it. Okay, so next I'm gonna um, kind of like squint a little bit as I'm looking at the image and decide which areas that I see are the darkest. Now this is definitely all in shadow and then I've got a lot of stuff here that's you know, with those shadows kind of working over the tree trunk and so on. So what I'm going to do is again in a very similar way, but now just a little bit careful, you know, you have to be a little bit more careful about your placement at this stage, um, sort of doing a very similar thing. So some areas where I see the shadows that are quite block like I block them in as well and some that I see are you know have quite a bit of that sort of a sky light coming through I just just dab my brush you know there isn't much to it you just you just go tap 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 and it sort of does the work for you Then there's a whole lot of darker shadows up on the top there. At this stage I'm still using green. I'm not using any of the shadow colors, you know, with the really dark ones. So this is really dark, but it's still green. So it's still a tree. Not so much just a pure shadow. We will do those things a little bit later. Now in some areas you would notice that you might get these little specks, but also you might get, you know, like this continuous area that has that shadow. So you can do that as well. Okay, now at this stage, the tree looks kind of a little bit childish, doesn't it? But that's because we've got the really light shades and then the really dark ones kind of stamped on. So what we need to do next is we need to just wait for this to dry a little bit and then merge these two together. Now while this is drying, I'm going to go and work on the, um, the tree trunk again. And so this time I'm going to go for the darker brown and even add a little bit of Prussian green for the shadow. So now we're starting to look a little bit more at the shape and at the light and the shadows that are being cast as well. So that would help us to create a little bit more of that definition and also three-dimensional look because you almost always have shadow just underneath the leaves. If you don't create that shadow, it doesn't matter how beautifully you paint the rest of the tree, it's just going to look flat and very childish. Sometimes old large oak trees also have quite a bit of texture on their trunks, so not so much just the um, 
bark texture, you know, that's really fine. You can only really see it in close up, but it's kind of almost like branches that are going within the trunk itself. So that's what makes them so magical as well looking. So And yes, I said before, oak trees have always been praised for their incredible strength in terms of, you know, the timber, the longevity of it. Um, for the traditional, you know, icons, oak was the desired sort of boards for creating those icons. And a lot of the ones that have been painted on oak panels survived still like for hundreds of years so some things from 12th century have still survived while the ones that would have been done on things like birch and things like that would have sort of cracked and deteriorated not all there's still some that are there but yeah definitely oak tree is definitely one of the strongest Trees. Also, you would notice if you know if you observe oak trees, you would notice that they tend to be some of the branches tend to be almost like snakes. They kind of go like that, so you can you can create that look as well. You know because as I said before, you know when I was showing you how to do the birch tree, tr you know um, branch direction very often gets overlooked. I remember in Russia we used to get huge beautiful oak trees. In New Zealand though because it's so humid here a lot of them grow this crazy moss on them and the moss sort of gets really long and kind of sometimes even hangs on them and I've did, you know, I did a few sketches like that too just you know from on the spot and stuff. Now while this is drying I can't really do much work on the tree so I'm going to work on the background and then I will um, come back and work on the tree when that's dry. Okay so what I've done here is I've added the shadow. Now another thing I know I told you guys I'm not going to be focusing too much on the background otherwise it'll take too long but one thing that makes sure that you observe is the shadow of the tree because it will really depend on the direction of the light so if you've got light falling from the top the shadow will be mainly at the side if you've got like in this instance obviously the, sh the light is coming just a little bit off from this side then you get the shadow here if you've got like a setting sun or maybe a sunrise then you will get sun shining from this direction and the shadows will be very very long okay so now that this is all drying I'm just gonna go over and I'm going to merge these leaves a little bit now for that I'm going to mix sort of like a mid-tone so I'm just using a little bit of a lighter green and a uh, maybe a little bit of the sort of a cascade green and what I'm doing now is I'm very very gently merging those things together but I'm making sure to leave these little spots that I want to be light as they are. So kind of a working a little bit in reverse to what we did with a birch tree, remember? So now I am unifying some of the areas but more as an aftermath rather than you know the first thing. So there are lots of different techniques but I just chose these techniques for these trees because I think it's a little bit more appropriate for the for the greenery that they have. And there's quite a bit of a darker shadow, so I'm just gonna go and wash all of this out. Now, creating that kind of wash sort of allows you to go over some of these lighter spots that you've created that you might not want there anymore and bring things together. Or at the same time, If you go quite lightly over them, you see like I'm doing here, they still appear, but they're not as dark. They still stand out, but not as dark as the rest of them. And now just a little bit for the fun of it, we're just going to add a few little specks of that color here and there. 
So we're kind of layering these little specks. Next thing is the shadows. So we're going much darker this time around and we're going to work both on the actual tree trunk and the greenery. So for the tree trunk I'm going to add some neutral tint with uh, Van Dyke Brown, so quite a dark, almost black-like color, not totally black though. And I'm just going to really place the, you know, the color and quite a bit of depth here. And when you start to work on the really dark shadows on the greenery, um, make sure that you don't only do the little tiny little ones. So say for example, if you see some, like I can see some really dark leaves there, you know, I'll do that. But also make sure that you look at the really large shadows. Um, otherwise the tree can get lost. Like remember how it kind of looked a little bit, you know, all over the place. So doing these larger, larger shadow areas um, will really help to pull the tree together. And now any kind of branches that weren't very visible before, you know, with the colors we were working on, but they are in the shadow and they're quite visible here. So now is the time to put them in. So I can see a few really dark sort of a leafy areas on the on these branches here on the bottom that are going over whatever that is on the background. And so again, if there are some larger areas, you go in and fill them out and I can see some mm -hmm. sort of uh, things that are more in detail, even though they are in shadow. So I'm just going to be a little bit more careful with those ones and a little bit more precise. So these large shadows will really help you to show that volume, you know, of the tree. And little shadows will help you to show, uh, portray the details, you know, the little leaves and things like that. So now I'm using pretty much almost black, almost just a little bit of like the green and blue that I have on the brush. And now rather than going along with all the branches, you only focus on the small areas, areas that are in shadow and that are visible. So just like that, just little reminders, because if you outline the whole thing, again, it will look quite cartoony and extremely flat. Now it's time for this brush, a smaller one. I'm going to start working on some of the really finer sort of little things again remember if you are a total beginner and you sort of feel a little bit uncomfortable doing things like that you don't have to not in the first go you can always have a couple of goes up until this point and then add things thing these things in but really I don't think you should be scared of this, just give it a go and you'll see that it's quite a bit of fun. Also, if you're starting to paint or draw, you know, whenever you pick up a piece of paper and you start to paint and you feel like, oh, I, I don't know, this might not come out right and, you know, just don't put any expectations on the end product like just decide for yourself that when you pick up a piece of paper that this is the piece of paper I'm gonna play around with and then I'm gonna put it in the bin that way you will free yourself up and believe me your results would be even better you might decide not to put it in the bin after all very leafy now they do have an interesting shape to their leaves so if for example you drawing or painting one of their branches and close up you need to make sure that you look at that leaf shape but from the distance there's no way that these shapes can or should influence how you sketch these really 
now you see I'm using watercolor but I'm using it in quite a thick sort of a way if you like working with watercolor even thicker than that then definitely go for gouache and give that a go you might really like it I will be using a little bit of lighter um, gouache a little bit later on but can be a really fun medium to use and works really well as a mixed media with watercolor it's just perfect because they're so similar yet they're different enough to supplement each other more of that darkness on the bottom now let's have a look there will be a little bit of it up in the top too but we have to be much more strategic now about where we place it just because there's much less of it here okay so i'm gonna go back for the gouache or oh, remember you can use your white watercolor gouache gives a better coverage though so keep in mind if you're using watercolor you might not be able to get the light colors as dense and now I'm gonna mix it up with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green I'm using lighter colors a bit more yellow because there's quite a bit of yellow on that you know probably because of the Sun catching it and now I'm gonna add little highlights so very similar to what we did here with a darker color just building up the lighter layers of those little specks and in the same way as the dark some areas you might want to merge together and some you might want to leave as separate leaves now if you don't like using gouache I know some people who resort to more classical way of working with watercolor sort of a look down on using white that's how I was taught we weren't meant to use white and you can always um, use masking medium sometimes called blocking medium as well before you start and reserve some of these things but if you ask me I quite like that sort of a, a look of white on there because it helps to build up that sort of a heavier look um, but that's just me personally so see what you might prefer and give it a try So anywhere where the light is being okay and next step go even lighter with the white so again I'm just gonna pop a little bit of white on my palette and now I'm gonna mix just yellow with it Just a little bit of lightness on the background to create a bit of contrast. And now the last final touch for the tree is those little tiny branches that we might want to bring out. You know, especially the ones that are darker in color. And then I think the tree will be done. So just let's have a look. Some darker branches up here. Sometimes you can see branches without the leaves, so you can put those in. They always create this very, very detailed look, even though you didn't really do any details, you just put a little branch out at the end and it really gives you a good payoff. But again, don't overdo with them because it'll look like the tree is sick and losing all its leaves. <laughs> Some darker branches that are sort of coming down on this side here. Because there's quite a few of them. There's an empty branch on the bottom. And that's about it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again work a little bit on the background and then I will be back to remove the masking tape okay so what I've done so far is I've darkened the shadow a little bit and I've added a little bit more yellow into the foreground so all we have to do now is remove the masking tape ok 
Okay, so now we have our oak tree. Okay, and now we are going to work on the fir tree with the Christmas tree. You've got the perfect straight tree trunk. So it does not go right, left, doesn't matter if it's a standalone tree or if it's in the forest, it's the nature of these trees. Apparently the same thing happens with their root system as well. The root system is quite long and, and narrow. That's the big difference between the pine tree and a uh, Christmas tree. If there is a really strong wind, the Christmas tree will break. So you'll still have the root system sitting in the ground because the roots are so long and deep. But with the pine tree, you've got roots that are quite shallow and quite large, just like its branches, you know, they're sort of opening up and quite large. So if there's a strong wind, then the whole tree usually falls over with its roots right up in the air. Okay, but that's enough about the, <laughs> the vegetation side of things. Let's uh, look at how do we approach the Christmas tree. And we approach it with a straight line, guys. We just go for a vertical straight line. I plant my one right in the middle of the paper, like that. They usually are quite tall as well, it depends on how old they are. Um, and I also will create a little bit of the background, but I won't uh, be explaining and filming and all this, otherwise I won't have enough time to cover all of the trees for this tutorial. And let's go for the, for the branches. So for this tree, you don't really want to put every single little needle in place, right? But the main thing that you do see when you look at it is the direction of those branches. So the branches are quite thin at the top and then they sort of go upwards and they kind of almost have a flick right at the tip. So you want to put those flicks right in like that. So it's kind of like a skeleton, like think of it like a rib cage or something. So that's how you want to approach it. You don't want to do any pine cones when you're starting this up. And they kind of all like, you get these branches going in different directions, but they all kind of are sitting around the same sort of a level. So kind of like a Lego, you know, when you put those things together. Some branches sort of go down, obviously the larger all the branches and the younger the branches, the more upright they are. The ones on the top are almost pointing upwards like that. And the ones that are on the bottom are going down and almost hanging, kind of. Now, with these larger branches, you also get little branches coming off the larger ones. See, like I've done one there. So you'd be getting these little things. Um, don't worry about putting all of them, but only the ones that are quite prominent, the ones that you really want to make sure you don't forget about. Christmas trees are quite a favorite subject matter for a lot of artists, you know, a lot of Russian artists um, have created really beautiful, very interesting artworks with them. Of course, using all sorts of things, watercolor and oils and even tempera. Um, so it's quite a beautiful tree to paint as well. You know, it's quite magical if you want it to be and it can be really dark and scary at the same time too. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the background and then I'm going to come back and show you how to paint a tree. Done the background and now that it's almost dry, I'm going to start working on the tree. So the first thing you want to do when you're approaching a tree like that is to create a reasonably cool color. Now, if you actually look at the color of the greenery of this tree, it's green, but it's more on the cooler side. So a lot of the times when you see shadows on this tree, you will find that they have quite a bit of blue in them. So for this, I'm going to use a mix of uh, Persian green, which is almost like blue with a little bit of uh, olive green. So I'm going to actually start with the tree trunk again. So I'm going to put this really light, sort of a faint line 
And remember, I'm using this paint in a reasonably transparent way. So I'm not loading up my brush with a lot of pigment. This is very light and when it dries, it will become even lighter. Fine. And now I'm go it's almost like, if you think about it, you're almost like creating a shadow for this tree. Uh, don't worry about too much detail in terms of the light uh, sh and shade change but you want to focus a little bit more on the main shapes of it so like here on the top it's got a little sort of a branch and little things sticking out that I can see um, I can't see any any little branches coming off those I guess because these are baby branches themselves but then with the next lot you can already kind of see little bits and pieces sticking out so we do that remember don't worry about any lighter or darker colors we're just going with this sort of a shadow color to start with now next lot and then with the next lot that's where you get that typical sort of a Christmas tree look this branch is a very interesting shape so we're just getting more things in and already there will be some branches that are going you know further that way and we can see a little bit of them on the side just sticking out We've got another lot of branches and these ones are quite wide so we get quite a bit of sort of greenery on those ones and as we keep going down we get more and more stuff going on wider and wider branches to the point where it's sometimes it's quite hard to even decipher which one is which but this is what we do we just keep going with them and we don't give up we keep painting because remember trees love being painted why else do you think they pose like this for us i mean think about it makes sense doesn't it and more branches and we just keep going and remember you don't want to go really strong really dense at this stage you want it to be you know just as, as if it's just there it's almost like a ghost of the tree you know it's like a tree that's trying to scare you remember when we marked them some of them are getting heavy and so they go down like this there's another one that's going down and now at this stage because so many of them sort of going down it's really even hard to keep the you know to keep positioning them right so what happens now is we just we just go if you see a branch you put it in if you don't you don't remember if you're using images you don't have to do exactly the same thing unless you're doing photorealism you can just use images for inspiration so you can just say i really like this and I'm going to create an image that's based on this. Okay, so now we've got the the skeleton or the ghost for this tree. This is just a little bit of a background there. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go over with some shadows and some lights afterwards. So uh, what you want to do is perhaps if you're working on a smaller scaled artwork you can already go for a smaller brush um, I think I'm still okay using this one for now we're going to mix a really dark cool green so this time I'm going to use some neutral tint you can use black if you'd like or paints gray you know whatever dark color that you've got Prussian green olive green so now I've mixed up my darker shadow color and I'm going to go over some of the areas that are actually quite dark. Okay, so I'm going to use just the tip of my brush. That's why it's good to have a brush that has a really good tip because then you can end up using one brush, one size to create your whole artwork. 
because you can use it as a tiny little one but also like a larger as a larger one or you can always resort to having few brushes and doing that okay also at this stage i'm going to be adding more details as well so you know how we've done the overall sort of a skeleton ghost thing but now if there are any little bits and pieces that i sort of sort of didn't add now is the time to add those in as well maybe a little tip so tiny little branches that are coming off and you see how I'm still using the same color for the trunk for the tree trunk as well because at this stage if you start putting brown and things like that it will look very sort of a childish almost so you want to you want to make sure that you pay really good attention to the image that you're working just adding those and you see because we went with a lighter color even if you've done something that you don't really like like you think oh this is a bit too low I want it to be high this time you get a good chance to go and correct yourself so or if you're happy with what you've done you can just go over some of these areas now I'm not gonna go over everything especially these larger ones that quite a bit of sort of a warmer light that they're catching so I'm going to go only over the areas that have quite a bit of shadow. So there's a bit of a shadow here and a little bit there and a bit on the bottom. But these light areas, I'm going to leave them and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them next. You can simplify them if this is a little bit hard and you're not sure. You can always simplify them and have maybe a smaller tree, a shorter tree, because I mean that can be, you know, a tree as well. But I just want to make sure that you guys see the whole process. Okay, now there's one part of the tree trunk where the brown is showing. So I'm going to go over it with quite a light sort of a brown because it's not brown brown it's just it's quite a cool sort of a shade but there's just a little bit over there so I'm gonna pop that in okay so next I'm going to mix up a little bit of the warmer and brighter green where I'm using a bit of a grass green olive over the some of the areas I'll add a bit of ochre in there, I think, as well. It's sort of missing a bit of that sort of a yellow that's not too zingy. Okay, so now over these areas, you know, the ones that are just left as they are, those areas of the of the ghost of the tree, I'm going to go over them with that sort of a warmer green. So just like that. And if you see any of these branches, then this part shouldn't take too long because you've already marked down your ghost tree and with every new layer remember you've got that freedom to add something new you know maybe you want to dense up some areas of the branches maybe you want to sort of brush them out a little bit or you know you've got that sort of opportunity with every next layer that you make now you see how that little part there almost looks already finished but we still have quite a bit of work to do especially on these larger branches so next I'm gonna grab my little brush and I'm gonna mix a really dark blue color so I'm gonna use some Prussian green you can also use Prussian blue as well it'll suit well this thing we're gonna be doing and a i'm gonna take some neutral tint you can also use black for that if you'd like so that's to really really give it a nice de deep sort of a black on the top there will be some little areas that might have some of that shadow but just tiny little bit remember these are tiny little branches so you want to add these details sparingly and then as you go along you start to get more of these darker shadows especially on the bottom parts of those branches some branches that are right at the back there they might be all completely covered in this 
so you can do that as well see this little bit here this is the shadow from another branch that's coming right at us so that shadow looks a little bit triangular there's another branch right at the back there that's catching quite a bit of shadow a few branches i'm not sure what they are maybe they're not you know just drying up or something but we can put them in there for the really interesting sort of a dreamy look there's another branch that's quite a bit of shadow so there's a lot of darkness in there quite a bit of contrast too so you notice how even the branches that catch quite a bit of light they still end up having quite a bit of shadow on the bottom there underneath you know underneath all the greenery and that's why you can see all the crispy details against the sky there again if perhaps you are working without the background which i would suggest for the beginners if you're just learning to do it just try as it is now these branches on the bottom they are in quite a bit of shadow so we need to make sure that we create enough of the darkness there too for this you can even use gouache because you can use the paint quite thickly as it is so dark shadows on the tree trunk too okay so my next step is to start using gouache so I'm going to use gouache for some of the areas because remember this tree is quite dark anyway so we don't really need to do a lot of really bright highlights but what I would like to do is to mix up a little bit of a lighter color to um, just create some highlights because it's such a nice crisp bright day and I'm going to mix up a bit of blue as well you know that similar blue that I used for the sky and just because usually you get a lot of reflections from things so you might think that you know sky is blue and that's blue but the tree is green so it's green but you get a lot of that sort of overlapping see little spots here and here that are catching light so make sure you pay attention you can put those in for this drawing if you i mean for the sketch if you want to only do it with watercolor you can always you use a um you know blocking medium to reserve specific spaces and just keep them white but i would like to make this tutorial so that it's usable for people who might only have gouache or might only have watercolor so that it's still quite useful And now some of the areas where we've got light greenery going over the tree trunk this is where we really need to focus because it's quite important to get this right And I want to create quite a bright sort of a green here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of color here and there just a little bit remember these are dark trees and we'll still have to add more shadows go over some of these highlighted areas to give them a bit of that sort of a glow from them effect now i'm gonna leave this to dry and i'm gonna work on the background and when it dries i'm gonna come back and put some more shadows and then i think that would be it okay unfortunately my camera cut out for some reason um and i've just been doing a little bit more shadow so pretty much going over these branches just like we did up here and, and adding a bit more shadow down here 
Um, to show you again what I've been doing is I've mixed up the dark blue sort of a color with a bit of neutral tint and the dark sort of greens and blues and <clears throat> just went over it like this just adding those little details and those flicks and building up the the shadows a few little details here and there for the larger branches and now I just want to do something right at the end is to put a little bit of a different color through so I'm going to go for the opposite so I'm going to go for a little bit of red I know it sounds strange but I'm just going to get a little bit of red and just in some areas just pop a little bit of this now it's not supposed to stand out as red on its own but it can give a little bit of that contrast to the green and the blue and make this a little bit more a little bit more interesting in terms of color just it sort of creates this brown shade when it's layered over but you see these are just tiny little sort of spots and mostly in the shadows the thing that you have to realize is that when you see green color it's the opposite to red on the spectrum so on the color wheel so if you've got a specific angle to green objects they may appear red and the same goes for red objects they can appear green so creating that sort of a look it really um, makes things a little bit more interesting for your eye and your brain and in some areas for those really really deep shadows just tiny little spots here and there you don't want to overdo it with black because then you can make your whole tree black really but you see how I'm just applying it here and there just those little spots and they would make quite a bit of difference okay so I think this tree is finally finished so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the masking tape Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to my wonderful patrons for their support. Guys, I wouldn't be able to do this without you. Don't forget to share these tutorials because I would really hope that my videos can help as many people as possible. Hope you guys have a great day and as always, thank you so much for painting with me.